Hello and welcome to Regina Tarot. I'm Regina and I am here with another unboxing. So, one of the card divination systems that exists in the world is the Lenormand. I had heard a lot about the Bluebird Lenormand deck and I thought if I was going to dive into it, then maybe this would be the deck that I should get. It is not the same thing as Tarot. Um, in terms of other users and readers that I would recommend who do Lenormand spreads on YouTube, there's one who's just simply called Lenormand Reader. Um, it's spelled like that, two separate words, that's their handle. Um, I don't know them or anything. I don't even think I've interacted with them like on YouTube, but um, that's the one I watch to kind of get an idea um, of what it's about. It seems like there's very specific spreads to use. I've never seen anyone use a Lenormand deck in like a cluster system uh, for readings. So that's basically my limited knowledge and understanding of it. I just know that it's another uh, another system. Um, and that's it. So I have started this corner. It's a small, it's a very small deck. Uh, 38 fortune telling cards. And I believe they are mostly objects. Um, and then depending on the order and the spread, they have different meanings. It's published by U.S. Games. And I'm not seeing an author on here, so I'm wondering if the Bluebird... I don't know if it's the original system, but like we will find out, I think, from the guidebook. Alright, let's see. Yeah, it's like some really small, which is going to be great for my hands, or for sh for me to shuffle them. Ooh, that is like not wanting to open. Okay, here we go. So it's just a little tuck box. Okay, we do have a guidebook in there, and I do see that the deck is wrapped in cellophane. Okay, here we go. Written by Stuart R. Kaplan. I'm also, uh, I've, I've got a really huge soft spot in my heart for birds, so the Blue Bird Lenormand, of course, for the choices. I'm like, yep, it's got bird in the title. It's mine. Um, okay, so this one was published in 2017. And let's get this corner open. Again, I'm using tweezers for my jewelry making stuff. I should use them to kind of manipulate really tiny, like either seed beads or really thin wire. But this is not a crafting video. We're doing Normans. Um, so I might not do a spread because I have never worked with a Lenormand system before. So I want to learn it before I actually offer a reading, even something general. But let's see. So here are the cards, and there's the back, just the sweet blue back, as similar to that. And let's see here. Just want to see if we can get a little bit of history. Mademoiselle Lenormand of Paris. Okay, so she was a historical diviner, and I think this is her system. So there's a portrait. Biography. Marie Anne Adelaide Lenormand was born on May 27th, 1772. And I'm not going to say it right, so I'm just going to say France. <laughs> she was the eldest of three siblings. Her parents died before she was six, and her care was entrusted to step-parents. Lenormand had a mischievous spirit, and she was often petulant. Life with her stepfather and stepmother proved difficult, and her stepfather decided to entrust her education to the Benedictine nuns of the Royal Academy at Alencon. Alan, I know I'm saying, I don't know how to pronounce it. Lenormand's extraordinary gifts of prophecy became evident at an early age. At the age of seven, she made several predictions for her young companions, which proved remarkably accurate. The devout Benedictine subjected Lenormand to severe punishment of bread and water to counter her budding, budding sorceress abilities. 
When a Benedictine abbess was dismissed for misconduct, Lenormand predicted that the King of France would name her replacement. Eighteen months later, her prophecy was fulfilled when the king named a Madame de Liverde as her successor. Lenormand left the Abbey of the Benedictines for the Abbey of the Sisters of St. Mary, where she continued her education. Although Lenormand showed great avidity for learning, her stepmother could no longer subsidize her education. She was apprenticed at age 14 to an obscure seamstress, but Lenormand had neither the skill nor temperament for suing. Suing. Sewing. With only a single white dress and a six-pound crown, she soon left Paris. Okay, so this is actually quite lengthy. I thought we were going to get, like, like kind of um, a little bit of a summation. But this is the backstory of Mademoiselle Lenormand, who... Um, well, I do know that this is the figure who... who invented this system of card reading. The guidebook does have... Okay, so there's the descriptions of the cards, but it does have method of spreading the cards... And it looks like they, four cards left to right at the top as follows. And there's like a little dot matrix thing, not like a dot matrix printer, but a dot map. I don't know what that's called. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. At the time that I am doing this, it's very late and some of my words are failing. So do forgive me, but... Here we go. Let's just flip through the cards, and I will um, speak with more authority on this after I have worked with it a little bit. So the art is very simplistic from what I recall in terms of looking at this. One, the Cavalier. Heed well good news from the Cavalier, and passion views promise good cheer. Sadness that hides veiled in the day, once disguised, soon flies away. So it looks like there's all these little rhymes that go with it. Let's do a size comparison. So, yes, quite tiny compared to a standard deck. Um, thinner, much shorter. Um, and then the cardstock, though, is super nice. Like, it's, it's a little bit thicker and, like, quite sturdy. I think that the substantialness probably has to do with the height and width of them as much as the cardstock, but it's matte finish. Two clover flowers. I'm not going to read every single one. But that's fortune. So we have the ship. Travel. Let's see. So the house. Establishing a foundation. Stability. The tree, reaching goals, clouds, okay, difficulty with some kind of decision or getting all the information to lead to a decision, seven, the snake, So this would indicate an enemy of some kind. Eight is the coffin. Some sort of loss. And of course I'm gleaning this just from the, um, the little poems here. Flowers. Pleasure. A time of happiness, possibly. Sky. This depends on what's surrounding it, according to this little rhyme here. It could go either way. This could be a harvest, or this could be cutting something down. Birch rod. So this is arguments. Birds, messages. That is a sweet card can't quite decide what I mean I like the um I like the art 
I feel like it's very, um, like it's interesting because it's not very stark, but it is simple in that what it represents. Like there's not a lot of um, destruction. So the child, innocence, a fresh start. The fox. Deception. Potential traps. We've got the bear here. Be careful with your resources and use your power wisely. Is basically the message from that one. Stars. Joy from afar. Messages from overseas. Opportunities from overseas. Stork. Change, progress, healing. The dog. Loyalty, happiness. The tower. So this is not like the tower in the standard tarot at all. So this one, just to show you the difference, I am going to read that. Um, a lone tower stands confident and secure. Ground your strength in all that is pure. When troubles surround, weakness may come. Problems that abound, you must overcome. It's interesting. It seems to be talking about, like, stand firm in your own strength and use it. Um, to your advantage. Garden. Beauty, friendship. Mountain. Courage and persistence to overcome an obstacle, possibly. Crossroad. So one of the things that I had heard about this particular system is that it's very precise um, and a little bit blunt in terms of how you interpret the messages. And I do know that the spreads are very particular. Crossroad. I feel like that's self-explanatory. Let's see. Mice. The robber mice take your treasure. So trouble, I've, I remember this one from seeing other readers use it, but they always have the word trouble connected to the mouse. Heart. Fulfillment, joy, romance. Love of oneself. I do like this deck. At first I wasn't really feeling it, and like now the more that I'm flipping through it, I'm kind of... I'm really liking it. A ring. Some kind of commitment. It can be marriage. It might be other things. Let's see the book. Tales of Inner Emotion. Hidden knowledge or knowledge that has to be learned. Letter. Good news or bad news, depending on the cards around it. Gentlemen. So this one again, it is a, it does represent a person, but whether they're um, it's happy circumstances or negative circumstances depends on the cards again around it. Gentlemen, the second apparently. <laughs> It's interesting. Yeah, two gentlemen, two ladies. And again, however the people are aspected, it's all about what cards are around it. I think that's, I think that's really interesting. Um, in terms of a system, I can see how that might work. Especially if you've got, I mean, so there's two of 
two gentlemen, two ladies. I could see how that would work, too, if you've got multiple people showing up in a situation in a spread. That could be very beneficial. Or confusing, depending. But, like, I wouldn't, you know... Like, I haven't worked with it yet, so anything I say right now, I'll take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Lilies. Interesting. So passion, but whether the passion is in a positive direction or negative, again, depends on the position of the card. The sun. Good luck. moon honors coming your way intuition and emotion again all of that in conjunction with other cards the key inspiration answers things falling into place fish Depending on which way the, fa the fish is facing from the other cards. So if the fish is swimming away, it's bad news. It's, it's like um, an opportunity missed. If it's swimming toward the other cards, it's fortune coming towards you. Well, see, it's like simple, but very, very clear. Anchor. So if the anchor, depending on the position of the anchor, like, cause it could be a lost anchor or it could be an anchor that is, um, holding things stable according to that rhyme and the cross. So it could be suffering or a lifting of burdens, either one. And that is my look at the bluebird Lenormand. Again, I'm not going to do a spread with this. Because I do feel that um, I need to... Because it is such a different system from the tarot. I do want to study it a little bit before I do that. And uh, But yeah, but this is one of the ones, one of the... If you get into divination systems at all, it is something to kind of... I think to be aware of. Like, I've been meaning to kind of look into it for quite some time. So I'm actually... I'm excited to learn this. And I do think that 20, 2021 or maybe like the last two months of... 2020, if, um, if time willing, um, I might start doing some deep dives into these decks and systems and things that I've been acquiring throughout the year. So I'm excited to do that. Anyway, thank you for hanging out and experiencing this with me. If you enjoy this video or any of the other unboxings, please like, share, subscribe. If you have a deck that you are curious about um, and you want to see, um, Leave a comment in the section below and let me know and I'll see if I can get my hands on it and do a little walkthrough so you get a chance to look at it um, if I get enough of a consensus on that. Anyway, that is it. Thank you again for hanging out here at Regina Tarot and I will see you the next time.